Hi, I'm Jordan Coe, the Executive Director of the National Down Syndrome Congress. I'm wearing a yellow button-down shirt. I'm sitting in my living room. You can see a picture of Berlin uh, behind me to my left. Um, I'm honored to be here today speaking on behalf of our entire organization at the National Down Syndrome Congress. I'm here for our staff, our board, our supporters, our community members, truly our family. Um, thank you for inviting us to participate in this event. We'd like to say thank you to the UN. Um, we're really excited to be here and to be part of World Down Syndrome Day and your celebration. At the NDSC, we're committed to providing accurate and up-to-date information and resources to families and individuals who have a diagnosis of Down syndrome at any point in their lifespan. And this includes our library of online resources, our programs that reach out into the community, our policy and advocacy work in Washington, D.C. and locally, our trainings, our webinars, and many other facets that are designed to be family-friendly, family-first resources. Our work is focused on doing what we can to maximize the abilities of everyone, to ensure that, we, that nobody has a decision that is made on what limits their ability or what they can achieve before we find out what they're capable of. Um, I know that I personally do this work because I believe that the civil rights gap for people with disabilities in this world is the biggest civil rights issue that we have today. Um, there are many causes that are justified in the civil rights space, but when one in four people will likely have a disability, many forget that in the future, they or a loved one will need accessibility. They or a loved one will be excluded at some point from some part of their lives. And so while we can work to right those wrongs um, every single day, we, uh, you know, we can't remember to do that if we're not inclusive ourselves, if we're not inclusive first. And so at the NDSC, our actions are intentionally intentional. Unsurprisingly, we have 21 board seats and three of those seats are dedicated to self-advocates, just like World Down Syndrome Day to Day 321. Um, and these three self-advocates help lead a self-advocate committee of our organization. Um, they lead every action the NDSC takes. They provide us with guidance on what policies need changed based on their lives, what needs to happen in classrooms to be more inclusive, what mechanisms and trainings and tools are best used to ensure that we're reaching those who we intend to serve. And so, as part of all that we do, we host one of the largest disability conventions in the world. And there are many parts of our convention that would seem standard, uh, an exhibition fair, workshops, trainings, meals, et cetera. But our convention is a lot more than that. It's a family reunion, uh, even for those people who have never intended. When you walk through the doors of our convention, you come to a place that features just many of the abilities of our self-advocates and families immediately feel at home when they walk in. They see people that, are living the same lives as them, living comfortably, living openly, living together. And so even one of our keynote speakers um, at our convention every year is a self-advocate. We have an entire path, an entire portion of our convention that is designed by self-advocates for self-advocates that has hundreds of attendees each year. And many of our workshops are led by self-advocates, both in that section of our convention and all of the rest. Um, it's, a, it's a place where families can come and see the endless potential that every person in our world has to offer. And while inclusion is our priority that we talk about at NDSC, the best way to hear about how we enact that inclusion and how we are committed to that inclusion is not to hear from me about what our organization does and how that's done, but to hear about from one of our board members and one of those self-advocates. Today, we've got one of them here with me, and I am really honored to introduce this board member. His name is Daniel Chaplin, and he is a self-advocate that amazing amazingly is committed to running a half marathon in every single state and he is already 65 percent of the way completing the goal i am a runner and i have not run that many half marathons in that many states um, so i'm here to turn things over to daniel who's here to share with you about himself and the truly important role that he has at the ndsc hi my name is daniel chaplin and i'm really glad to talk to you i'd like to tell you a little about myself and what the National Down Syndrome Congress means to me. I have Down Syndrome, and when I was little, I didn't like having it. I knew some things were harder for me because I had it, and I also knew that there are a lot of times people didn't treat me the same as they treated my friends or siblings. At a restaurant, the waiter would ask my parents what I wanted to eat, not me. At the doctor, the nurse would ask my mom how I felt, not me. I wasn't expected or given a chance to speak for myself. 
I think this happens a lot to people with Down syndrome, even when they are adults. The summer I was 14, I went to the NDSC convention and things were really different there. There were great speakers, workshops, and activities, and people with Down syndrome were at the center of it all. They led workshops, they gave speeches, and they even served on the NDSC's board of directors. Attending that convention changed things for me. I realized people with Down syndrome could speak for themselves, and I wanted to be one of those people. I wanted to be an advocate for people with Down syndrome. A few years later, I was elected as a self-advocate representative to the NDSC board, and three years ago, I was elected as a regular board member. Being a part of the NDSC is a really important part of my life. In the NDSC, I've learned to be proud of people with Down syndrome. I've made great friends that I'll have for life. And I've learned to advocate for people with Down syndrome to have opportunities to live the lives we choose. Advocacy matters to me a lot, and serving on the NDSC Board of Directors has given me new opportunities for advocacy. It's also given me lots more confidence to advocate. It helped me realize that every time I'm out in the world, I advocate for people with Down syndrome by letting people see that people with Down syndrome are capable and helpful, and that we should have opportunities for work and recreation just like everybody else. For me, this includes my job at a law firm where I serve as a mailman and make deliveries to FedEx, UPS, and the Federal Courthouse. It also includes my time ballroom dancing and competing in half marathons all across the United States. Serving on the NDSC board also lets me, a person with Down syndrome, be a part of planning and deciding the ways the NDSC can most help people with Down syndrome. Our organization really means a lot to people with Down syndrome. Individuals with Down syndrome really believe that we are more alike than different. Having people with Down syndrome on the board of directors really shows that the NDSC really means that. People with Down syndrome are the heart of our organization. Thank you.